Playhouse. And there in the rain, a miracle must have occurred. For she held in her hand the Roman coin she'd given him. The coin that had the word always on it. It must have been a miracle, wasn't it, Doctor? Yes, Miss Ullman, a miracle. A miracle in the rain. We have been told that faith will move mountains. Perhaps then faith will reunite those who, through circumstance, have been forced apart. But what it was and how it happened, we'll leave to you. Ben Hecht, who wrote the story, says it was a miracle in the rain. All right, now, potato salad, a jar of sweet pickles, and a loaf of bread. Anything else, Miss Wood? That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guess we're getting plenty of hard rain this evening. Pretty hard. Me? Yeah. You're pretty wet. No umbrella? No umbrella. Mm-hmm. Oh, here, I'll put your things in another sack. Might get wet and tear. How's your mother? Oh, same as ever. Good night, Mr. Stone. Mm-hmm. Well, good night, Miss Wood. Don't get too wet going home. I'll try not to. Oh! <laughs> Say, I'm sorry. Gosh, shall I ever learn to look in front of me when I walk? My sergeant told me I was going to get into trouble if I didn't. And Private Hugenon, well, he said... that's all right. Private. Wait, here, I'll pick up your package. The least I can do. Well, I'm really sorry, believe me. Well, if, if you... No, no, don't go yet. Uh, here's the dry doorway. Better stop a minute to get your bearings. Well, I... Uh, I don't think Oh, I... come on. Oh. All right. Now you're talking. There. Good night. Just as I suspected. You're as wet as a duck pond in the middle of a flood. <laughs> Here, here's a clean handkerchief. Now watch your face. Sure, go on. I want to see what you look like beneath that three feet of water. Well, thanks. Gosh, look at her go. What? The rain. Look at her go. You know, a night like this makes a town almost human. <laughs> There's nothing so good as a real rain. Just listen to her. Personally, I'm not so crazy about rain. Mm, it's all in the point of view. Ah, this rain won't let up for hours. What do you say we just walk out and let her soak? I'll put your bundles under my coat and then they won't get wet. Here, come on. Oh, give me... I-, I can't. I- I've got to catch the bus. The bus? Oh, all right. We'll catch the bus. Come on. Out we go. Come oh. on. Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right. You know, your face needs this again. Oh, no, no. I've one of my own hankies here in my purse. Have any idea where we're going? I'm going home. And that's what I figured. You got a ma or a pa or something? My mother's home. Ah, that's wonderful. Now, down to brass tacks. My name is Art Huguenot, Private U.S. Army. I'm on my second day of a 10-day furlough. Now, what's your name? Ruth Wood. Ruthie, I can see by looking at you that you're a girl a man can trust. Why? No, I'm serious. A fellow has to be pretty careful. I tell you what, I'm inviting you and your ma to have dinner with me tonight. Those pickles will keep till tomorrow. My mother can't go out. She's a cripple. Oh, well then, there's nothing left to do but eat at your house. You mean you? Sure, I can wipe dishes. (laughs) Hey, look at that rain now. It's turning somersaults. The happy home? This stairwell is our front yard. Say, <laughs> not bad, not bad. I could do with a few more trees. Here, come on, give me your key. Oh, no, you've got all you can do with that package. 
Um, Mr. Huguenin. Hey, 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 not that. The name's Art, as in Art Colony. All right. Art. Um, my mother may not speak to you. She doesn't talk very much to anybody. Oh, I see. Well, come on, we'll cheer her up. There. You can put the package on the table. Okay, on the table it is. Mother, this is Mr. Huguenin. He's going to have dinner with us. Good evening, Mrs. Wood. Nice place you have. And a piano. Oh, wait till I'm in bed. I only sing after supper. Keeps me from being thrown out before I get my fiddles. <laughs> and don't pay any attention to your daughter, Mrs. Wood. My name is Art, as, as in... Art, Colin. Long lady. Art, as in... Where art thou? <laughs> Good heaven, don't you ever stop. <laughs> and which is the way to the nearest bathtub? Bathtub? Sure, I need a shave and a shower to look like a flower. <laughs> All right. Through that door in there. There's a clean towel in the closet behind the door. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now, you fix everything up. And when you see me again, I'll be looking very pretty. <laughs> Another cup of coffee, Art. Yeah, thanks. Mm, good stuff, your coffee. Art, you made Mother smile. I haven't seen her do that in years. Good. I told you we'd cheer her up. Well, come on, Mrs. Wood. I'm going to wheel your chair by the piano and sing you a tune I know. Well, here, let me do that, Art. Oh, no. This is my job for the evening. There. How's that, Mrs. Wood? Fine. You see? Oh, Art, she likes you. She hasn't spoken to anybody but me since I can remember. Oh, that's a good sign. Well, here goes. Chickens are crowing on solid mountain. Hold the ink, don't do the holiday. So many pretty girls, I can't count them. Hold the ink, don't do the holiday. My true love's a blue white daisy. Come on, Ruth, sing it with me. Doodle all the day. Sometimes she drives me almost crazy. Oh, dee the doodle all the day. <laughs> Twelve o'clock on a fine Saturday afternoon. All your work finished. All finished. Fine. Incidentally, young lady, I've been watching you all morning. Oh. Is anything wrong? Wrong. No. Something's right, whatever it is. How about letting an old friend in on the secret? What's his name? Oh. What? Well, do... <laughs> I mean, I didn't know it was that obvious. My dear young lady, when old man McCary came in, he almost fell out of his skin when you smiled at him and said... Good morning, Mr. McCary. How's the old boy? <laughs> Something's coming up. And it ain't a raise in pay. Miss Ullman, why don't you come along with me? He said he'd meet me downstairs at 12.15, and I'd like you to sort of be there. Me? Yes. You're the best friend I have. And I want you to meet him. His name is R. Huguenin, and he's a soldier. I, I met him last night on my way home. He's very nice, but... I don't know much about him. Will you come? Well, oh, come on, here's your hat. There he is. Which one? See, the soldier. <laughs> I see at least 20 within walking distance. Hi, I got lost. That's why I'm out of your head at that. Hello. We just got here ourselves. Um, I want you to meet Miss Allman, my boss. This is Mr. Huguenin, Miss Allman. Hello. Pleased to meet you. So you're Ruth's boss. Hmm. Just as I pictured you. Mine's got three stripes on his arm and four chips on his shoulder. Oh, <laughs> and listen, Miss Allman, don't pay any attention to Ruthie. My name is Art, as, as in, in Art. Wrong again. Art is in my art belongs to Daddy. Oh, <laughs> you just can't stop him, Miss Allman. <laughs> don't try. Well, I guess I'd better run along now. Oh, nothing doing. I've reserved a table for three. But you didn't know. I should be assigned to the State Department. I know everything. And just then I heard the bugle blowing reveille, and I woke up in a cold sweat. Oh, gosh. I was afraid I really had said something to the lieutenant. 
Oh, I have laughed so much I heard. <laughs> Me too. Well, you better save some for the matinee. I have three tickets to oh. my sister Eileen. We've just got time to make it. My goodness, that's really not necessary. No, you children run along and have fun. Ah, nothing doing. If you leave a blight will they send on me, I'll get the hiccups and bump into my sergeant. Oh, my goodness. I should have met you 20 years ago. <laughs> All right. You say you have three tickets? Yep. I told you I was psychic. In the second act where the South American sailors all dance the <laughs> car. <laughs> and when the subway worker pops up out of the middle of the It was good, Ruth. Good. I like to see you laugh. You're nice, Ruth. <laughs> well, I hate to break up our party, but I've got to go home and get supper. Sure you do. You know, this town certainly gives you the willies. Look, it's full of blind people. So no wonder they don't bump into each other or all get run over. You know what, Ruth? We're all going home with you and pick up some things on the way, so stop worrying. How do you feel about some caviar tonight, Miss Altman? For heaven's sake. Oh, my. I've never had any. I'm sure it's awful. A very sensible attitude. Is it uh, okay if we come, Ruthie? Well, since when did you start asking me? <laughs> you know it's okay, I... Swell. Hey, wait a minute. What's going on in here? Uh, it's one of those auctions. I wouldn't go near them. No? Not even if I pushed you? Oh, here we go, Ruth. Ready or not? <laughs> you, you can stop pushing, Admiral. I'll go quietly. Uh, Admiral, she says. This sounds good. And I'll see to it that it goes on the block right away. I want you to look at this, folks. That genuine Roman coin. A price of seventy. Dug up from the tomb of the Caesars. Huh. Think of what this piece of gold has seen. If it could only come in and tell you the same of the Roman Emperor's on. Now, oh, what am I made for this table piece of metal? I want to buy it, huh? What am I made? Two dollars! Two dollars! I have been two dollars for this price of fifty. Think of it. Do I hear three, 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 three? Do I hear three for you once? And two dollars. Oh, it's my hand sold to you, young lady in the green hat. Or I should say, give it away. Let's see what you got, Ruth. Here. Looks sort of antique doesn't it? Sure does. Uh, look, it says something around here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you make it out? Uh, Dominus, Noster, Justinianus, Perpetuus, Augustus. Well, I remembered my Latin. That perpetuus means always, though. I, I remember that much. Always. I wonder if that hole belongs in it or if somebody made it recently. You can't tell about Roman coins. Uh, whatever made you buy it, Ruth? I don't really know. I just had to have it. Here, Art. It's for you. For me? Well, thanks. You know what? I'm going to wear it around my neck for a lucky piece, like in that poem. Remember it? Around his neck he wore the maid you trilled his charm. Little silver crucifix that keeps a man from harm. Ah, thanks, Ruthie. That perpetuous was written there for us, you know. It means that I will always think of you. No matter where they send me. And always love you. Oh, I, I hoped you'd say that. Darling, it was a miracle how we met in the rain. Remember? I love you, too. For always. Always. Well, how about that caviar? I know I won't like it, but you've got my curiosity aroused. <laughs> How's that boyfriend of ours? Oh. Oh, Milan, you startled me. I was thinking, how is he? He's just fine. Ah, I guess you two have had quite a week, haven't you? Oh, wonderful. The most wonderful week of my life, Miss Dolman. Mm-hmm. We haven't gone many places. Most of the evenings we were home with Mother. But it couldn't have been more wonderful. I think he's about the best in the world. I really mean that. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Oh, Art. Hello. No. No, I'm not busy. I'm glad you called. Oh, no, Art. Yes. Yes, I'll be right down. Goodbye. What's the matter, Ruth? He's leaving, Miss Ullman. 
He's cut his leave short and he's got to go right away. He wants me to meet him downstairs in five minutes. May I go, Miss Ellen? Certainly. Quick now, off with you. And, and don't try to come back this afternoon. And wish him all the luck in the world for me. Here I am, Ruthie. Art. Oh, Art. Oh, now don't cry, baby. I've only got about ten minutes. They told me an hour ago I'm supposed to be on my way to the boat. I can see I got lost for a few minutes. Boat? You mean... That's right. Overseas. Darling, I had to see you before I left. Oh, Art, I won't see you again. Sure you will, Ruthie. After it's all over, I'm coming back to you, darling. You're going to marry me. You will, won't you, Ruth? You know I will. You're the swellest thing that ever happened to me. I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh, I'll go to the boat with you. Please don't, Ruthie. It's hard enough this way. <laughs> darling, write me, will you? Here, I've written down where you can send your letters. They'll be forwarded. Don't worry if you don't hear from me sometime. I'll be off the mailman's route for quite a while. Oh, Art. Darling, I... write me, please. Yes. I'll think of you every minute. Be loving you always. Got your coin and a silver chain around my neck. I'll never take it off until I come back and give it to you. Remember, it says always. So you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> and I don't either. I love you, Ruth. You don't know how wonderful you are. Nobody does. Only me. Darling, kiss me once. So I can remember on that jungle island. Keep your eyes closed, Ruthie. I want to remember you this way. Goodbye, Ruthie. Goodbye, darling. My darling Art, all day I've been remembering how you kissed me goodbye just two months ago exactly. I can't tell you how it makes me feel. I close my eyes and you're near me again for a second. Then I open them and I want to cry because you're so far away. Darling, I'm so anxious to hear from you. I know you've written, as I have written every day. But you must be terribly far off that mailman's route. Oh, Art, when I see you again, I'll look at you so long you'll think I'm crazy. Months now, hmm? Three whole months. Not a word. It's terrible, Miss Ullman. Not knowing where he is. I know. It's too bad we didn't ask him some questions. Then we'd know where his folks live and might get some news about him from them. He doesn't have any folks. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, doesn't he have an aunt or an uncle or somebody? Not a soul. Then you're the only one close to him. Yes. Why did it have to be this way? I hate all these people sitting around looking so smug. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. You always keep asking me what I think. Well, I'll tell you. I want to die because I hate everything. I can't stand to sit down. Dear. I don't want to sit down. It's all such a fake, everybody walking around being so smug. I hate them all. Ruth, dear, please. I know how it is. Ruth, let's get out of here. I know a place I want to take you. This is my church, Ruth. Gives me a lot of comfort when I need help. Yes. There's the statue of St. Teresa, the one with all the lighted candles in front. St. Teresa. Which one is that in the corner? Oh, there? Uh, that must be St. Andrew. Yes, St. Andrew. He was the first friend of Jesus and is remembered for his generosity and self-effacement. Why hasn't he got any candles? You'd think somebody'd pay attention to him. 
I don't know, Ruth. I'm going to take him a couple of candles from St. Teresa. She won't mind them. All right. I'll wait here. Here, St. Andrew. Two candles. Help him to know, St. Andrew, that I love him, that I think of him always. Help him to know. Thanks for bringing me here, Miss Alman. It does help. I knew it would. Every evening I'm going to light a candle for St. Andrew. It'll help to cheer him up in his dark corner. That's a good idea, Ruth. Uh, would I be in the way if I came over to see you this evening? Oh, no. Please do come. All right. I'll be there around eight. On the dot, I brought you a book. Why, Ruth? What's the matter, child? Uh, yes. What about him? Have you heard where he is? Dead? No. Dead. Just before you came, I got this. It says he died bravely on Saipan. He told them to notify me. Ruth. Oh, you poor darling. Never coming back to oh. Ruth. Ruth. Well, Doctor. I don't understand it, Miss Ullman. She's been in this strange coma for five days. And now, as she was seeming to get better, it appears that she has pneumonia. How serious is it, Doctor? She's a very sick young lady. I don't mean to alarm you, but I think we should get her to a hospital as soon as possible. I'm going to give her the sulfur treatment. Poor Ruth. She's had such a hard time. By the way, Miss Ullman, she was mumbling something about a St. Andrew. What could she have meant by that? Oh, she made a vow to light a candle each day in front of the statue of St. Andrew at my church. She must have that on her mind now. Yes, yes, that's probably it. Well, if you don't mind, I'll call an ambulance. Go right ahead, Doctor. I'll go in and see if I can make her understand that I've lit a candle for each day to St. Andrew. Yes, that might soothe her. She's not in her room. What? Her door at the hall's open. She must have walked out by herself. Good Lord. We've got to find her. She's gone out in this rain. Heaven only knows what will happen. Light a candle. St. Andrew. Ruthie? What? Here I am. Over here. Art. Sure. Say, I'm glad I caught you. Come in here and let me look at you. Oh, Ruthie, let me look at your face. Art. Is it really you? Isn't the King of England? You've come back. Of course I've come back. What did you think? I'd stay away. Ruthie, I'm so glad to see you. I'm going to start yelling like an Indian. You didn't write me. Well, you can't send letters where there aren't any mailmen. What this war needs is more mailmen at the front. Oh, Art, you've come back. You're just the same. Tell me, is everything else still the same as it was? Infinitely worse. I love you so much I can't sleep or eat or anything. It's just like living cast away in a jungle without you. Come here. I want to hold you. Remember, it was raining like this 
when I saw you the first time. Remember? Oh, yes. I got all your letters. And look, remember this? It's the lucky piece I gave you. The genuine Roman coin. Here, you keep it now. I don't need it anymore. You're not going back. No, never more. I'm here to stay, like this, with you in my arms, always. Doctor, I found her. She's over here. Yes. She must have fainted in this doorway. Thank heaven it's dry here. Let me take a look at her. Oh. What's the matter? She didn't seem that far gone. Dead. She was such a nice little person, Dr. Lewis. I'm sure she was. Look. Look. Something in her hand. Let's see. Hmm, that's strange. Where could she have picked this up? Looks like an old coin with a hole in the middle. Let me see it. I... Oh. Dominus, Noster, Justinianus, Perpetuus, August. Do you know what it is? Yes. Yes, it belonged to... And perpetuous means always. Oh, Dr. Lewis, this is a miracle. A miracle. just heard Ben Hecht's story, A Miracle in the Rain, adapted for Author's Playhouse by Nelson Amstead and directed by Mr. Albert Cruz. Miss Fern Persons and Mr. William Everett were heard as Ruth Wood and Art Huguenon. Others in the cast were Miss Hope Summers, Mr. Charles Eggleston, and Mr. Jess Pugh. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shields. This has been the fourth in a new summer series of Authors Playhouse Productions. Radio adaptations of the best in the field of short stories. Selections from the works of contemporary writers, as well as the acknowledged masters of the past. These dramas represent outstanding productions presented on the weekly Authors Playhouse series, heard regularly over NBC for the past three years. Next week, Authors Playhouse will bring you the late Stephen Vincent Benet's story... Doc Melhorn and the Pearly Gates. This is the National Broadcasting Company.